You're sick and you curl up in bed with your favorite pet. Hmm, you think to yourself, why doesn't my dog get sick from being so close to me, even though I'm contagious? Well, the answer lies in the fact that most viruses are species specific, which means that they can't affect a member of another species unless they have very specific proteins on them that allow them to bind to the receptors on the cells, which will then let them enter. These receptors, which act as a lock and key, won't allow anything to squeeze through them unless the correct protein, a key, on the membrane of the virus presents itself. In capsulized form, the virus in your body extrudes very specific proteins, which have evolved to fit nicely into your cell's receptors and are therefore permitted access to your cells. In your dog, however, these same viral capsules extrude a very foreign protein, which is unable to gain entry to its cells. In this case, the viral capsule, which could be potentially deadly to you, will be treated like any other foreign particle, such as a piece of dust, and be consumed by your dog's lymphocytes. As you can imagine, this makes studying human viruses like the novel coronavirus in lab animals surprisingly difficult. The coronavirus extrudes proteins on its capsules which fit nicely into the human ACE2 receptor. So how can scientists study human viruses like this one in mice if most viruses are so species specific? ACE2 is expressed in the human cells such as the gut, respiratory tract, and smooth muscle cells in the human body. And the only way to get the mice sick with COVID, for the purpose of research of course only, is to engineer the mouse cells to express these human receptors. And ultimately, how can we get the cells to express those complex human receptors? We can't just inject them. It doesn't work that way. The only way we can get those receptors to be expressed on the cells in the mice is by altering the genetic structure after the eggs have been fertilized, but before they are birthed, and then breed them for multiple generations. In other words, we need to 1. Locate the gene that codes for the ACE2 receptors in the human DNA, 2. Remove it or make a copy of it, and 3. Put it into the mouse genome. In this case, to design this model, we need the gene in a very specific place where it will replace the mouse ACE2 receptors with the human ACE2 receptors. The CRISPR-Cas9 knock-in strategy is used for this model and will be used to insert the human ACE2 transgene using homology-directed repair. By creating these humanized ACE2 mice, we are now able to infect the mice with the virus and study the effects of it and treatments for the disease. 